Okay. So, today I want to just uh, know how much we know about uh, free energy. I want to see how many of you have heard this term, all of you must have heard. Uh, let us see wh what is your understanding of free energy. It is the energy of the system which is available to perform some work. Some work. Okay. So, that is the reason why we call it as a free energy uh, and uh, Gibbs has uh, defined it as you all are aware as uh, G equal to H minus T s. Hmm? This is something every one of you uh, should know and must have gone through it, where H is the enthalpy and T is the temperature and S is the entropy. Hmm? And this also coupled with uh, uh, the other equations, this comes actually from the second law of thermodynamics, all of you are aware of it. Uh, and because the entropy, concept of entropy is actually comes from the second law. Hmm? First law basically talks about what is what is first law? How many of you? Huh? Conservation of uh, energy is the first law. Okay. For example, H equal to E plus PV. This is what we call it as the first law. Hmm? This is let's say say one way of calling uh, the second law. Hmm? If you want to say, and uh, and then we also have something called a third law of thermodynamics. How many of you are aware of third law? What is third law? So, every substance has 0 entropy at uh, 0 Kelvin. Correct. So, uh, entropy S yes, tends to 0 as T tends to 0. This is what is third law. This is what we say. Am I right? And there one point that you all have to remember, whenever we say entropy, uh, which is basically entropy is the degree of randomness in a material and this degree of randomness can come into a material because of two important factors one is called thermal another is called configurational for example at any temperature there are vibrations inside a material and these vibrations would cause some kind of randomness inside the material and that particular uh, randomness that you see is what is referred to as thermal entropy. And we define that particular entropy in terms of how many of you know this? How is entropy defined? Yes, in fact, if you see the second law definition of entropy is d s equal to d h by t or we can it also comes out as q by t actually this is how this is how the first at, at the beginning people have defined the entropy and because we know uh, under certain conditions under what conditions q can be taken as d h constant pressure. Uh, so, we take it as d h and it becomes d h by t and h in principle enthalpy enthalpy is related to what internal energy, internal energy okay. e h equal to e plus p v we have already written but uh, how do you measure h if somebody wants to calculate the enthalpy of a material how does he from the specific heat so h is nothing but integral c p d t from anywhere from 0 let us say to some temperature t. So, h is integral C p d t and uh, basically uh, C p is what we know uh, is a heat capacity of a material at constant pressure and that is basically nothing but the amount of heat how, how does one define uh, the heat capacity tell me. The amount of heat uh, which a material can hold for a degree rise in temperature. Correct. Uh, not hold uh, the amount of heat that is required required that it needs uh, to raise the temperature that is how we define and once we define h as c integral c p d t yes automatically turns out to be because d s is d h by t. So, you can see that s is nothing but integral c p d t by t. Okay. So, these are the basic equations that one need to remember when we are talking about uh, the entropy and the enthalpy and in principle one can 
even find out how the entropy increases with uh, the heat capacity. In fact, if you carefully observe this, the heat capacity of a material itself is not a constant term. How does heat uh, capacity uh, change as a function of temperature, do you know? Increases, increases with, temperature. with temperature. What kind of a shape it has? If I plot, let us say, heat capacity as a function of temperature, how does that plot look like? Yes, it starts like this and then saturates somewhere and this value where it saturates is what we usually take it as how much? Some of you have remember from your earlier studies, it is 3 R, one can, one can derive that and show and as you can see that C p actually goes to 0 at absolute 0, because there are no vibrations at absolute 0. Heat capacity comes because of the vibrations and because the atomic vibrations vanish as you go to 0, the heat capacity goes to 0 and that is why you will see the entropy also actually goes to 0. That is what is third law of thermodynamics. So, you can see that the C p more or less is very, very small at and then it uh, increases and as a result because this increases, if I try to see what is d s by d t, that means the rate of change of entropy with temperature that can be given as what? d s by d t will be C p, it will actually turn out to be C p by t. So, that means, you can see that the rate of change of entropy with temperature is C p by t and that means, uh, the entropy always increases with increasing temperature. When I say d s by d t, how does the entropy change as you increase the temperature? Is it positive, is it negative or is it does not change? If you look at it, if C p was 0, then we can say d s by d t is 0. d s by d t being 0 means what? That entropy does not change with temperature. At any temperature, material will always have the same entropy and again I am talking in terms of the thermal entropy here. We have not yet come to what is called configurational entropy. Configurational entropy comes into picture when you take more than one type of atoms and try to put them together in one place like something like you take a box and try to put red balls and the white balls together, certain number of them and depending on how you can arrange these red and white balls, there is some randomness associated with that particular configuration and this is what we call it as a configurational entropy. And uh, you will see slowly as we go along, materials which are ordered will have very low configurational entropy and in fact, one can even prove that if a material is perfectly ordered. Have you heard of ordered compounds? For example, sodium chloride is an ordered compound. Hmm? You will see every sodium will have a chlorine atom around it and every chlorine will have a sodium atom around it because of the ionic bonding. Huh? You have also in metallic systems also you have intermetallic compounds. Okay? Things like uh, if you have heard of uh, compounds such as Ni3Al. Do you know where Ni3Al is very important? super alloys. The strengthening in super alloys basically comes from that particular phase which is called gamma prime phase Ni 3 Al. Ni 3 Al is ordered and uh, if it is in a perfectly ordered condition, an ordered material also can have some disorder inside it. We call it as partially ordered. If it is perfectly ordered, then in such a case we can prove as we go along, we will do it in this course that we can prove that it is actually will have 0 configurational entropy. And in that case, the material can only have one more entropy, which is the thermal entropy. Thermal entropy is bound to be there whether it is ordered or disordered structure. Only dif uh, difference between the two is, if it is perfectly ordered, it will not have a configurational entropy, it will have only one type of entropy, which is a thermal entropy. Otherwise, if it is disordered, it will have both of them. And for a pure metal, if I am considering, in principle, I will not talk about configurational entropy because there is no second element there. In fact, uh, if you uh, go deeper, people even 
talk in terms of the, the vacancies inside the material and talk about configurational entropy arising because of the presence of vacancies. But in general for, uh, for uh, uh, normal study, we usually consider for pure metals that only thermal entropy becomes dominant and configuration entropy does not come into picture. Only when I add a second element, a binary system or a ternary system or a quaternary system and so on, we start talking about uh, configurational entropy. So, in case of linear real, uh, existing at room temperature, will that be perfectly ordered? It is ordered of course, in fact uh, particularly in ionic solids, uh, if uh, to introduce a disorder into them is not so easy. For example, if you want to remove one of the chlorine atom, the bondings are disturbed. You need to maintain what is called the charge balance. And if you cannot maintain the charge balance, you are in there. The, the system is at a higher energy state. So, in order to keep the system at the lowest energy state, system prefers to have every sodium atom would like to have a chlorine atom around it because of the uh, the, the shape, the, basically the exchange of electrons in that particular material. So, you would see that in when I am talking about the, the thermal entropy, you would see the thermal entropy because C p is positive. C p is never negative. We have seen from here C p the lowest value C p can take is 0. So, that is at absolute 0. At any other temperature C p has a positive value. If this is positive, then this ratio is positive, is not it? So, the, this particular, so rate of change of entropy with temperature is always positive. So, entropy increases with increasing temperature and what is the rate at which it increases depends on the material. For, a, for some material which has a high C p, you would see that it will have a, uh, the rate at which incre increases is higher, you will have a steeper uh, entropy. If I plot entropy versus temperature, you would see a steeper curve there which we will see it uh, possibly in the next class as we go along. So, this is something which you need to understand before you start discussing about the free energy. I think with that we will stop hmm, Sir, for today. Can we induce configurational entropy by increasing the temperature? As in like NaCl if you increase the temperature, the bonds start becoming weaker right. Yeah. So, the order might not prevail at a certain temperature. True, but that particular entropy that you are getting there uh, can also be talked in terms of thermal entropy. So, that is why it is a it is a little tricky issue to say this particular entropy that is generated in the material is it because of thermal or not. Because, because of thermal we are inducing the configuration. That is why configuration entropy is assumed to be constant once you have fixed the amount of the second element. As you go along you will see uh, uh, how many of you remember configuration entropy uh, expression. K L and W and the K L and W if you derive it further, further it turns out to be minus R uh, X i L and X i. Hmm? For binary system we can easily show that it is uh, delta S uh, configurational is nothing but minus R X i L and X i plus X b L and X b. Some of you might have seen this and you can see that this is a function of only composition. Hmm? And once you fix that and in, in fact, you can clearly see that this would obviously go to 0 when you go to a pure metal side. If you put any one of them as 1, either x a as 1 or x b as 1, you would see immediately that the function goes to 0. So, that is why configurational entropy is 0 for a pure metal and it comes into picture only when you have more than one element. And in principle, uh, if it is more number of elements, we write it as x i ln x i, where i equal to 1, 2, whatever it is n. So, any number of elements, you can continue that expression. We will talk about multi component systems as we go along and there you will understand as we go along. Okay? We will stop now. <laughs>